ahead of uh, the governorship election in Ekiti State. Uh, many matters are rising. Let me let you know that uh, July 14, 2018, uh, Ekiti residents will be going to the poll to uh, know who will be uh, their governor for the next uh, four years uh, in the state. But let me let you know that uh, the PDP uh, that is coming from uh, the governor of the state, uh, Ayodele Fayoshi, has anointed his deputy Professor Kolapo Olushola, and uh, this particular one has uh, generated uh, reactions uh, from some party members. Well, Senator Biodo Lujimi is one of uh, the card carrying member of uh, the PDP, and she's saying, well, uh, she's against uh, this anointed uh, candidate uh, coming uh, from. Uh, governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshi, and she remained resolute, saying, Fayoshi can't uh, intimidate me. We hope to uh, join her uh, very soon on uh, the program uh, this morning to give us our own insight uh, concerning this one. For the APC, they are about uh, 33 uh, aspirants uh, jostling uh, to become a candidate for other party come the July 14 governorship election in the state. Uh, these are many matters arising. I uh, was speaking to political stakeholders coming from others, various uh, parties, as we get uh, their insights concerning all of this on the on the program uh, this morning. I see my guest in the studio this morning, legal practitioner Fred Nziako. Many thanks for staying tuned. Thanks, my brother. Public affairs analyst uh, Shijibomi Adebi Bennett. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Always a pleasure. And uh, well, let's start with uh, you, uh, Shiji, this time around. You are from Ekiti, you're a resident in Ekiti. You're even born there. Uh, looking at the politics in Ekiti at the moment, what exactly is happening between the APC and the PDP and other political gladiators uh, in the state ahead of uh, the July 14 uh, governorship election in the state? The first thing I would like to tell everybody is. Um, Ekiti state, Ekiti state politics is, I think, the most unpredictable in the country. We are a peculiar people, known for excellence in everything we try to do, especially in terms of education. And um, okay, just a moment. We have uh, the APC uh, chairman from Ekiti State, uh, GDR, we join us on the program uh, this morning. Many thanks for joining us on Call Dodgers. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you just uh, bring us up to speed uh, concerning the screening of about 33 aspirants uh, jostling to become a uh, candidate for your party ahead of uh, the July 14 governorship election in the state? Yeah, the screening exercise is going on as we speak in Abuja under the leadership of the former governor of Bayesa State. Uh, uh, His Excellency. Hello? We can hear you. Go on, go on. Yeah, the, the exercise is going on under the leadership of uh, former Governor of Bayesa State, His Excellency Silva. Now, um, further eminent personalities within the party. Members of uh, the, or the aspirants, rather, they are responding very well. So far, they have screened about 12. Out of 34, or out of 33, uh, we believe if things move on as expected, the exercise will be over within the next one or two days. Uh, we have prepared very well. Campaign is going on in all the 177 wards and 16 local government of Ikiti State. And uh, uh, the delegates are ready. The list is out already, and uh, it's been given to the to the aspirant. So, as far as we are concerned, the exercise is on. Do you think uh, your party has what it takes uh, to wrestle power with uh, the PDP uh, come uh, July 12, 14, 2018? This is not the first election we have been contesting the, the, this way of being on. We have whatever it takes to win an election in APC Ekiti State, and we are ready. This is not uh, 2014 when we were captured. That was the word used by the then president, that they should capture Ekiti State, and Ekiti State was actually captured. But 
But this time around, we are going to go democratic. And it, and it shall be known to every one of us. Okay. Our, our preparedness, we are fully prepared. Okay. Now, with uh, 33 aspirants, uh, Jocelyn, uh, to become a candidate in your party now, after is your party ready uh, to conduct a free, uh, fair, credible primary in the state? And what do you think can be the outcome of uh, this primary? If some you have in some aggrieved members out of this convention, definitely we are ready to conduct a free and fair primary, and you know APC for that. We have internal democracy, and we are going to explore all possibilities to see to it that we conduct a free and fair primary. Definitely, that may be a grieved person, but the party have set up maturity to, to appeal to them. There's no way that three people will be contesting for a position. And you think there won't be a grieved person at the end of the day. But what we have told them is that if they are committed party members, and I think at the end of it all, it's a game, and the winner must emerge. When that winner is emerge, we all come together as a party, then we, we, we rally around him, and the party will emerge victorious. So we have maturely set up already to resolve all issues pre, during, and after the primary. All right, then. I must say many thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Jidi Awe, uh, the chairman, the APC chairman there in AKT. Well, gentlemen, you heard him clearly uh, talking to uh, Jidi Awe, the chairman of uh, the APC in AKT State. So what do you make of this, Shiji? You're still on a, your, your line of thoughts. Yes, I think... Um I want to relate the elections, especially the primaries, to the to a game of football. Number one, the chairman, Mr. Gidea, the chairman of APC in, in the state, must make sure that he is not a stakeholder. It's very, very, um, he's not part, he's a stakeholder, but that it's not partisan. He's not factional. It's very, very difficult to do in our client. Everybody has someone they support. But like in a game of football, how do I <coughs> relate it? If I want Real Madrid to win, I don't need to induce the referee. All I need to do is proper planning. <coughs> Elections are heavy for four years. We have been given a date. Now, get money from my sponsors, get money from my creditors, go to the market, buy Ronaldo, buy a Salah, buy this one, buy How would you have if you were using um <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, okay. There's, right. a football, there's a football club in a kitchen. Okay. okay. So you can use that one. works. I don't know. <laughs> yes, but let me. But he knows us now. Uh, and, uh, us, all us, that. Or sunshine star. <laughs> let, let, let us use the Nigerian thing. Buy Victomusis. Buy Ainyama. Buy all those people. Okay. Immediately you buy them. Then put them on the field of play. There's no way they won't muzzle the opposition. So even if I have like someone that I think it's credible can give us victory. All I need to do is to speak to the delegates. It, do anything you have to do to win the delegates and let it be free and fair. When the referee has not done any, has not made any mistake, do you see anybody complain in a game of football? You will see it. The only thing you will, see, you will say is, uh, see you, what they did was they had the best of players in the world. So anybody, the 32 others will always say, what they did was, these people gave them more money. They used money to buy the vote, or they gave them more promises. Anything. So, but to have a rancorous free primaries, let it be free and fair. It happened in Lagos for President Buhari's um, um, elective convention. Everybody saw it. The people had already made up their minds. So there was nothing you gave them on the day of the primaries that changed to that. It happened with your Fayoshi. The, the, the first time he came, uh, there was this old um, elderly man that was contesting. And Ambassador, he was Ambassador's friend. But the, the, the people said, this is the person we want. So just the way it is, mm. the delegates will always speak. Okay. And going to the PDP. Before you get to the PDP, question. let's just crash uh, that out uh, this issue of the APC. 33 aspirants. Is that not too much for a party? Shiji. Oh, I thought much? you were talking to my friend. Um, I'll get to him. Yes. 33 is not too much. Because 
I think this everybody can see that okay. What is the antecedent of this state? This state always won't change. That's the number one. Number two, this state has all for any election that is being that the opposition always wins. The opposition, the party that wins always have the federal government backing. See, in in everything in life is about statistics. The statistics favor APC. I'm not saying APC will win, but the statistics favor them. Okay. So if the statistics favor you, will you now want to run in another party where a sitting pre, a sitting governor we muzzle you up? The same thing will happen in the PDP when in the national election is what I mean. Because President Buhari has said he wants to run again. So anybody that has the interest will not want to go to APC. We prefer to go to the PDP where there will be level playing field. Oh. Of it, Having the likes of uh, Baba Femi Ujudu, Shegun, Ne, Kayode, Fayemi, and all of this, Fred. Oh, what, what's your what, take on all what, of this? What CG mm. concluded with about the power of the incumbency simply can be interpreted to mean lack of internal democracy. That's all. Because if the party that is likely to win will be a party that is at the center in Abuja, is the voter coming from Abuja? The voter is in a kitty. So, the influence of Abuja must at all times be mm. minimized, if not completely eradicated. The people who use their thumbs, having been directed by their brains to decide who governs them, should be allowed to take that decision at the point of voting. At the point where we are now, we are talking about party primaries. Let me tell you, Instead of the Abuja factor being a determinant factor, what should be a determinant factor is the level of eternal democracy practiced by any political party. But from my understanding of CG analysis, that any time there is a sitting governor or a sitting president in a particular political party, that internal democracy takes, takes, takes flight because the governor or the president may want to have his way over and against the wish and the will of the people. But that is what now caused the party victory. Because any party that will win this election in a kitty state must first conduct credible and fair, seemingly free party primaries. Okay. Once you fail at that level, it brings internal rancor. It brings disillusionment because politics is a game of numbers. You don't go to battle with a depleted internal warfare. Just a moment, we have other PDP chairman uh, in AKT, Boye Gao Gontuashi, uh, joining us live uh, on Cold Arches uh, this morning. Many thanks uh, for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. Uh, well, can you just uh, bring us? Uh, up to speed, uh, your preparations uh, for uh, the 2018 July 14 uh, governorship election uh, in the state. Definitely, we are preparing very well for the July 14 governorship election. We are in the process of going for the primary. And in doing that, we have been formulating the delegate list as required by the constitution of our great party. We have automatic delegates and, of course, three ad hoc delegates are one. The three ad hoc delegates were elected last Saturday, supervised by national officers and uh, leadership, headed by the former president of the Senate, Senator David Mack. We have had all the uh, 33 other delegates, there are about 500 and something, with the existing over 1,600 automatic delegates. On Saturday, we are going to elect 16 national delegates, that is, one uh, one per local government. After that, we combine all the list 
as constituting the full delegate that will vote for the gubernatorial election. Okay. So which will result in producing the candidate for the party for the July 14 election. So what do you make of uh, the anointed uh, candidate of uh, the governor, uh, talking about Ayodele Fayoshi of Professor Kolapo Olushola, and you're having some factional members uh, in your party. I'm talking about Senator Olujimi, Abiodun Olujimi. What do you make of all this? I don't know what anointed candidate means. I am a party chairman. A party chairman does not look as anything that is not formal or official. In politics, there are strategies. For somebody to win, he could say he has the backing of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Another may say, I'm anointed by the Secretary General of the United Nations. Another may say, I'm anointed by the governor. What is important is for the uh, chairman to be neutral, and not to anoint anybody and make sure that the thing that anoints people are the votes of the legitimate delegates of the party. That is the, what is important to me. Are you the saying? The governor has a vote. The governor has a vote. The councillor has a vote. I will not doubt, however, that we could have uh, a man who has a liver who may be supporting somebody. And that means others have to work hard too. The name of delegates are known to everybody. So you have to shop for delegates. That's what is important. Okay, are you saying you're not in, in tandem with uh, that anointed candidate of uh, the I governor? I not said that I am a lawyer. A lawyer is bound by written laws. As far as I am concerned, there is no law which says somebody to be anointed by a governor. But you do not exclude whatever strategy anybody may employ to make sure that he wins or the person he favors wins. Are you with me? I'm with you. Go on. The, the, the party chairman does not have to be carried along. The party chairman is the father of all. He must not endorse anybody. He must not anoint anybody, and there is no provision of the Constitution which says that the party chairman is subordinate and party matters to the governors of the state. Okay, uh, what are you doing uh, to bring uh, the factional members uh, in your party uh, to come together for this uh, particular election? Talking about Abiodun uh, Olujimi, talking about uh, Dayo Adeyeye, these are people who are grouped members in your party. Don't call them factional personalities. These are eminent members of the party. You are leading minutes to contest. When you have a contest, people come out. It does not mean they belong to factions. They have not told you they belong to factions. When I had a meeting last week on determining which hotel where our national officers will stay, collectively, Olujimi, and the representative of uh, Ulusana Eleka, they all came as PDP. They are no factual, as far as I'm concerned. Well, there will be no factual. Okay, no, no. After the election, uh, the, 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 the PDP has strategies, has capacity to bring everybody together and make sure that we all fight for the candidate of the party. And in that about there is a living covenant among all aspirants that whoever wins in the fifth year transparent election, they are going to work for him. For him. Okay, now, do you think That's your party... Just a moment. Yeah. Do you think your party has uh, what it takes uh, to remain in power for the next four years? In the QG, and of course, at the national level, we have absolutely what it is. We have records. In the national level, it is an error, and a fatalistic error for that matter, that ABC came to power. You can remember that within 16 years, PDP had a borrowed six trillion, and within three years, ABC, the accounts party, has borrowed 16 trillion naira. And for our own six trillion, we have 
I'm afraid uh, we, we, we can't continue with this one. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Boyega, we're going to watch a PDP chairman, Ekiti State. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program uh, this morning. Gentlemen, you had the PDP chairman there. We hope to get through to Senator Abiodun Olujimi on the program this morning to also give our own angle uh, to all of this in uh, the build up to the Ekiti 2018 governorship election in the state. What's in the meantime? Let's open the phone lines to get the pulse of Nigerians on what we're looking at. We started with uh, Senator Dino Mela's ordeal. Now to ahead of the AKT governorship election. What's your take in all of this? Well, let me continue with you on your line of thoughts. You had Sorry, let me the PDP chairman there. You quickly want to say something. Okay. On what he's saying because I did not interject because of in Nigeria when your elders are talking, then you must keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I mean mm. is not, I, because as it continues, I want us to get it in proper perspective. The question you asked is, why is it, why do we have 33 people in APC? And I gave two reasons. Reason one, because statistically, people have seen that, okay, I can have the influence of not to be cheated or otherwise of the federal mind and it has happened twice that's one that's static statistically number two is because when you have an incumbent and the incumbent has made up his mind that this is where i'm going you don't go to that kind of party you go to a party where there will be level playing field it happened in abuja when pdp knew this is where good luck jonathan and the pdp of those days were going every other person rushed to apc where they could have a level playing field. So those two reasons are my own reasons why there are 33 candidates in the APC. Not that I'm saying um, the people, the delegates are going to vote, and I've made that analogy in the beginning, and at the same time, the general election is the people of AKT that we have, that will give the mandate. Okay, let's get your line of thoughts on yeah, this. Yeah, but what is important, I, 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 I get it very clearly. There's no, there's no contradiction. What is important is that um, it points uh, it points towards one thing. If the primary, the party primary is not free and fair and credible, because it could be seem to be free, fair and credible. Just a moment, you will continue with this line yes. of thought. Let's play join uh, Peter from Taraba. Many thanks for joining us on the program this morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Peter. Yeah, thank you. So thank you so my, much for joining us. My contribution on your discussion, well, I want to start on a Mila A issue. Because when this case, when issues about Mila A rise up, I don't know many people just try to join the wagon because people are criticizing. But when you ask some people what is is seen and what is it, I will tell you that it's actually on the social media, which is, which is, which I don't really know why the concern and how people just seem like that. All, okay, all, just like this issue that is happening, we cannot tell what's the fire between him and the security men at that spot. Because it's in this country that a sitting governor was kidnapped. A sitting governor with the security at the uh, uh, government house. Still, he was dead by a senior police officer and was kidnapped. And when they are talking about senator, nothing is it, it, it's not... It, it, it's not... Uh, 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 if anything can happen to him, depends on the people involved in the case, depends on the people in the case, having that issue with the, with the governor, and that this, and that, and that this case about the police boss also is interested, very, very interested in, in, in this case. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Peter, you've made your point. It's six or seconds. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning. You can continue with a line of thought. So my line of thought is that for any party to win any election, it must start by one, having unity internally, so that all forces will be joined together towards pushing the party through. The party through. 
And that unity cannot be articulated when the primary elections leading to the main election is not free, fair, and credible. That's all. Irrespective of the number, they could be 100 aspirants. It doesn't matter. After all, how many political parties do we have in Nigeria? As at last count, we have over 66, 67 political parties. Assuming, assuming all the political parties have candidates, well, at least one candidate each, that means we are looking at 66, 67 people jostling for the position of the governor. So, but what is important is at the party level, there is credibility in the primary election. At the general level, there is credibility in the general election. And that's all. Whoever wins becomes the governor of the state. 